Green Arrow number one, the end. Arrow and Canary stop the underground men at the Seattle docks. They're joined in the fight by Amy Oliver's little sister. The men were using Queen Industries shipping containers to transport the people. Oliver goes to Queen Industries to discuss the irregularities in business with Cyrus Broderick, the CFO. Queen is ambushed at his apartments by Shadu and then Amy. Shadu is Amy's mother. Broderick is revealed as a top member of the underground men. Well, that didn't take long to see what happened in Green Arrow number one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that ups the ante a lot, especially, especially having an, uh, a classic Green Arrow villain like Shadow. I mean, you went from the underground men who are a bunch of new characters, you know, the low-level thug types, to one who can actually take out Green Arrow and... Who does? What is the... They have, like, what is it, a love-hate relationship between Shadu that's, and Ollie? That's the understanding I have, is that she was apparently involved with Ollie's dad. So she is, I mean, sort of part of the family, but um, I get the feeling it's sort of her strict assassin codes won't necessarily allow her to be friends with, okay. with Ollie. At the beginning of the issue, as they take down more underground men they encounter the fact that we said Queen Industry shipping containers are being used to transport these homeless people, unfortunately. And that makes Black Canary, Dinah, she really questions what is going on and why doesn't Oliver know what is going on in his business, which mm -hmm. makes him go question Cyrus Broderick. Mm -hmm. And that's where things really start to pick up on the unfolding of who is really involved with this. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because even reading it, I just kind of knew from the name Cyrus Broderick. <laughs> what a, a Cyrus this, the virus. Oh virus. yeah, gotta, gotta be a bad guy in the mm -hmm. end, yeah. But it, it is funny to see um, the scenes of him going into the office and the, the receptionist is so amazed to see Oliver Queen, you know, didn't, yes. didn't expect to see him in months. And even then kind of had to explain to him about it you know, how the business worked and, and where certain files were located and yep. things. Once he started looking, he was able to find irregu irregularities and other mishaps within the company, but the CFO was just very easily able to breeze it off. So Oliver doesn't really make himself known too much as the day-to-day -day person that keeps his hands in all the operations. And even in Seattle, uh, Black Canary when they were driving around hey I have this I have that but do you really know what you're doing even though your names on the building your names are on the scholarships your names are on all these athletic fields what are you really doing with yourself what does the name really stand for mm -hmm. and I think that's what Oliver is going to find out is what does the Queen name stand for in the community and at large yep I got a lot of vibes from this, from the uh, the Iron Man films, especially the early ones, where at least in those, Tony Stark knows what his his company has been doing, but then he finds out sort of the dark side of what his company has been doing too, and that gives them the impetus to try and stop that. And that's sort of the same change that Oliver Queen is going through too. Mm -hmm. And the fact that at the very end, when Shadu was attacking Oliver in his apartment. Amy helped out. He mm -hmm. was not expecting either one of them, mm -hmm. especially his sister. Yeah. I yeah. wonder why that is. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what sort of control Shadow has over Amy, if that's just, um, you know, voluntary loyalty on Amy's part, or if that's some sort of um, programmed mental suggestion. You know, when she shows up, Amy turns on him. Who knows? Well, Cyrus made a phone call mm -hmm. after Oliver left and said it's time. And so I can only assume that there's a connection between Oliver's uh, Cyrus and Amy and Shadow. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's in league with the underground men. Yep. And It'd be interesting to see who Cyrus called, too. Did he mm -hmm. call Shadow? Did he call Amy? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, Green Arrow number one for you. Green Arrow number two, Erasure. Amy and Shadow dump Oliver Queen in the ocean off Seattle, leaving him for dead. The name of the group Shadow serves is called the Ninth Circle. John Diggle, working a private security job outside Abu Dhabi, receives a message that Oliver Queen is dead. 
Queen is pronounced dead in a murder-suicide. Queen Secretary Wendy Poole's body was washed ashore. Amy Queen's emergency homing beacon leaves Henry to find Oliver. Queen washed ashore on Puget Sound. Oliver Queen's high-rise building is blown up. Black Canary searches for clues. Desolate and broke, Oliver Queen regroups at his doomsday cellar and starts looking for answers as Green Arrow. Well, that didn't take long to find out who exactly is the group behind all this. Yeah, yeah, and I think in the future, Oliver Queen just needs to not buy any more boats. Between getting shipwrecked in his origin story and you know establishing himself as Green Arrow and now getting dumped on a boat and left half dead, he needs to just say no to all those future boat salesmen who come around. <laughs> um, they took a... They made sure, they being Amy, Shadu, and the Ninth Circle, and Cyrus, they're going to great lengths to discredit Oliver Queen. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I don't really know yet. It'll be interesting to see what the, what the uh, ulterior motive for that is. At least, I think they're trying right now at least to get him off their tail because they know he's interested in what they're doing. But exactly why they want to do that to Ali is, is, inter is interesting. I think it might have something to do with Cyrus being such a big head of Queen Industries that if he can discredit Ali, it gives him more reign, mm -hmm. more control over the company to do whatever it is that he is involved yeah. in. And then even then, anything Ali would have blown the whistle on, he would have been discredited anyway because it makes it look like he murdered his secretary and, you know, now he's dead, supposedly. Black Canary's not giving up on him, though. Mm -hmm. at, least he has, at least he has one thing going for him. And on the plus side, he does have John Diggle on the other side of the world who's now interested in, in the Ninth Circle, too. Yes, because the person that John Diggle was private security for was associated or was a member of the Ninth Circle. Mm -hmm. Like a former member who was then eliminated by one of their uh, thugs, these sort of very zombified yeah. looking yes. burnt flame guys. And they made sure that they burned uh, the, that person and left some type of stones on his eyes with uh, a, a very peculiar circle going around mm -hmm. and around. So we see that the Ninth Circle has a large reach around the world. Mm -hmm. So we're not dealing with a localized group of low-level terrorists, it looks like it has a far-reaching scope. Mm -hmm. Green Arrow number three, the Ninth Circle. Green Arrow breaks into Queen Industries. He encounters members of the Ninth Circle on Broderick's floor. John Diggle is in Rome searching for information on the Ninth Circle. The Ninth Circle is revealed to be a bank for organized crime. Roderick reveals he is a board member of the Ninth Circle. Black Canary stows herself on a Queen Industries ship. Shadow chases after Arrow, and Arrow is surrounded by Seattle police. At the Inferno, the Ninth Circle's hideout, Amy shows Dante that Black Canary has stowed on a Queen industry ship. Well, now we know who the Ninth, or what the Ninth Circle is. Yeah, that's an interesting, I found that a really interesting uh, take on a, a criminal organization. At least it's not, it's not another world domination organization, it's not another terrorist organization, it's it's a bank. Yes. It, it, it supplies a money. Bank. Yeah, it supplies money to all the other criminal organizations. And that's, that's a different, it's an interesting take and it's an interesting adversary for Green Arrow who is trying to save homeless people and here he is fighting a bank. And I thought that was an interesting, just an interesting relationship they established there. Yes, that all, they were talking about how every terrorist organization, every major crime syndicate, they need funding anytime they rob a bank or they need money to who do they go to but this organization for finances and it makes sense to have a legitimate organization like queen industries be the launderer of money because mm -hmm. it can put itself in a lot of uh, diverse fields mm -hmm. yep it almost kind of reminded me of like the the hellfire club from marvel comics where it's it's made up of a lot of elites and uses cover businesses just to, to launder that money. Like Sebastian Shaw's The Black King, he uses 
Shaw Industries to cover that up as a front for that. And that's that's a neat, again, it's a neat um, sort of rich versus poor mm -hmm. mentality, which kind of leads to the, the Robin Hood aspect of, yes. of Green Arrow. Well, I mentioned Dante. It looks like that, that there's the head of the underground men is uh, named Dante, and he has a control over Emmy and Shadow that they answered to him. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're in servitude in a way with him, and that was the orders to kill Oliver Queen. But Oliver Queen's still getting disgraced here and there, the name Oliver Queen, so he's fighting back as the Green Arrow. But one thing I thought was interesting, when Shadow was chasing Green Arrow, when he was surrounded by the police who he's kind of give charitable donations to in the past, they weren't accepting of anything that he wanted. And they made a point of, your money can't really save you out of this. Yeah. Well, I found it interesting a couple issues. When he does essentially bribe a cop, calls it a, a charitable yes. donation, is I found that to be kind of out of character for him in, in a lot of the classic comics. And now he doesn't have the money to do that, so I think that is sort of taking him, you know, getting cut off from his funding is taking him back to his roots, where he is just a guy who's relying on his wit and his his bow and arrow and his, his skills. Yeah, because Henry, his uh, tech person, has left him as well because he said, if you have no money to pay me, I'd like to believe you're innocent, but I have bills to pay. Mm -hmm. He helped him as far as he was willing to help him when he nursed him back, helped nurse him back to health. But now he's all alone save for Black Canary, mm -hmm. who stowed aboard a Queen Industries ship, but she didn't do quite a good job because she is tracked, I mm -hmm. guess you want to yeah. say. Well, and Amy gets points for spotting her that teeny tiny on a, on a yes. little view screen and pointing that out to everybody. So she, she's got some skills. Yes, she looks does. Like. Where do you think, after we've talked about Green Arrow 1 through 3, where do you think the story is going to unfold? How do you think it's going to unfold? Well, we'll see how, it'll be interesting to see how Ali fares with the cops. If he ends up, if he ends up getting arrested or something, that might, that might leave Canary kind of high and dry when she makes it to the Ninth Circle headquarters on that ship. But it looks like there's going to be a pretty big showdown yes. between all those forces. And we can't forget John Diggle, who went to Rome and got some answers about the Ninth Gate and will probably make his way before too long back to Seattle to try to find out what exactly is going on with Oliver Queen mm -hmm. because he doesn't believe he's dead. Mm -hmm. And he made it from Abu Dhabi to Rome pretty fast, so he yes. should make it to Seattle pretty quick, too. Yes. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we've got Batman and the Bat Family, so we'll be right back after this. <laughs> 